Hey guys, how's it going? Aaron here with AA Shaves and I am back again. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come check me out. Um, I really appreciate your support and just each and every one of you for being here. So thank you so much for stopping by. Hope everyone out there is doing well. My wife and I, we are doing great. Um, so come spring, we were kind of in the middle of planning a trip to um, Patagonia. Uh, so southern, it's like the southern tip of South America that has, that's made up of uh, Chile as well as Argentina. Um, so when it's spring up here in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be fall down there and down in, in southern South America. Um, so we kind of want to aim to do that to go see the fall colors and everything. And it's also kind of the off season down there. So uh, prices are better. It's not as touristy. So uh, we are aiming to do that come spring. So um, just out of curiosity for anyone who has ever been to Patagonia in Southern South America, um, I would love to hear your experience or if you have any travel tips, um, I would really appreciate that a lot. So um, yeah, so we're pretty excited to be in the middle of planning that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I am just uh, ready for a shave today doing my thing and let's just get right into it. Let me take a quick sip of water here. All right, so uh, let's start with the soap for today. So Sterling Soap, my favorite artisan. Um, I think this is a Christmas seasonal they've had for a few years now. This is frankincense and myrrh. And I don't know how long it, they've had this one for, maybe a couple years. I always kind of eyed it. But I, I just never got around to, to buying it, but I'm glad I finally purchased it this Christmas season. Um, yeah, because it's one I've always been looking at um, as a big earthy incense fan. Um, I don't know why I never snagged this one earlier, but I'm just really happy to have it in the den now. So I'm looking forward to reviewing frankincense and myrrh today. Um, I've probably used this one three or four times. You can kind of see where I scooped off the top there. Um, and man, you got to love Sterling's pores. 5.8 ounces. Probably like the best deal in wet shaving. It's just, that's just one of the many, many things that's great about Sterling and why they're just my, my favorite artisan. They were my first and they're still my favorite artisan to this day. So really, really excited to be, um, doing a shave and review of frankincense and myrrh today. And you know, I haven't seen a lot of people on uh, YouTube review this scent. Um, I think when I searched it on YouTube, only like a couple people used it, so. Um, which is a bummer, you know, because it's sterling and uh, I do enjoy the scent. I'm gonna get more into the scent in a minute. But um, yes, that's gonna be frankincense and myrrh. Um, razor for today. Uh, it's probably my fifth time using this one on camera, but this is slowly becoming my favorite razor of all time. Uh, I got the Mula R41 attached to the the handle of a Parker 26C. Uh, I love this handle because it's got a lot of weight to it. I love heavy handles. And yeah, I just think the weight really adds into, really helps me out in the shape. Look at that Mula R41. Um, I love aggressive razors nowadays because of my coarse hair and man, I tell you what, the more I use this, the, uh, Mula R41, the more I just fall in love with it. It's such a phenomenal, phenomenal razor. Um, it is, it is very aggressive, but once you get the hang of it, it's just, man, the shaves this thing gives me, it is just, they are just awesome. This thing is just so efficient. I love this thing. So... Um, yeah, and if you're an experienced shaver, it's really the Mule R41, R41, excuse me, it's really nothing to be afraid of. Um, it's just a very, very awesome razor. Um, good price point, too. Going to be pairing that up with a Treat Classic Pakistani blade. Never had an issue with Treat Classics. Um, anyone else out there watching? Um, I got to get a bunch of new blades pretty soon. My, my go-to are the Astra Greens um, because of their price. You can get a lot of them off like Amazon. You can get a hundred for like, what is it? 10 bucks or something like that. But um, 
anyone else has like blade recommendations, I would love to know your thoughts on that. So, all right, putting the Tree Classic here in the Mule R41. Gonna get that loaded up. Boom. I love how intimidating this razor looks. <laughs> Look at that, it almost looks like it has teeth. Yeah, love the, uh, love the Mule R41. All right, moving on to the aftershave. So I did not get the aftershave for frankincense and myrrh. Uh, I was, wasn't really sure how the aftershave for that was gonna be, so I avoided it, but I'm really happy to be using the soap. But uh, aftershave is gonna be a classic Christmas Eve from Sterling. Um, this is probably my favorite scent Sterling ever made, along with Barbershop. I'm just in love with this scent. And probably my favorite Sterling label, probably my favorite label they make. There's something about that little Christmas tree that I just really, really love. Um, yeah, Christmas Eve is truly a classic Christmas scent. It's like a mixture of evergreen notes with uh, gourmand notes. Like there's vanilla and cranberry in there too, along with the Christmas tree scent. And man, it is just a beautiful, beautiful scent. One of my favorite scents of all time. Christmas Eve. Um, I think it's a pretty good pairing with frankincense and myrrh, both kind of Christmas themed. So that is what we are going with today. Um, all right, let's take a look at the lather here. I actually already had this lathered up in the Pereira shave bowl. Look at that. You can still see a lot of the soap in the bottom. I am a large soap user when I bowl lather. So all right, nice lather here. Didn't really put too much water in it today. It's a little on the, well, no, looks pretty good. It's definitely not too hydrated. It's a little thicker than I usually do it. Um, yeah, brush for today is the, I forget the name of this brush, but it's a really cheap Yaki brush. I got it for like eight bucks free shipping from China off of uh, AliExpress. Can't believe it was free shipping all the way from China. That's just, <laughs> that just blows my mind. But yeah, Yaki Synthetics. I probably sound like a broken record at, at this point, but I just love them. They're cheap um, and they get the job done. They don't really lose bristles. So they're really, really good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wet the face here. We're gonna get this uh, frankincense and myrrh shaved on the road. Yeah, like I said, I think this soap has been out for, I don't know. I think they've, the last few Christmases, they've they've released it. I think I've been seeing it for like three years, but I'm happy I finally snagged it. It's my latest soap purchase here, so. All right, nice lather here. All right, gonna, I got like a week's worth of growth or something like that, so I'm gonna do some scrubbing action along with some painting here to kind of get the soap underneath the whiskers. Nice small brush here. Nice small brush, got a nice kind of handle to it too. All right, nice looking lather. Yeah, a little thicker than I usually do it. Um, I guess lately I haven't been adding, <laughs> look at that. Got a Santa thing going. Um, yeah, lately I haven't been adding like too much water to my lather because I don't want it to get too kind of runny and airy. So I've been liking my thicker lathers lately and it's been working out. All right, let's get a little, little bit more lather here. And you know what, when I shave today, I noticed that every time I go with the grain on the neck, um, I don't think I really have to do that. I think honestly today, I'm just gonna try to go against the grain on the neck because my hair kind of grows down on the neck. So I think that'll take care of it and it kind of, it'll make the shave a little bit quicker, so. All right, lather's looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and get the mustache. Very nice lather today. Very, very nice with the frankincense and myrrh. So, 
So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the scent of frankincense and myrrh here. So like I said, I'm happy I finally snagged this one because um, for a long time I've been in a really big fan of incense. Um, and I used to be a really big incense head like back in the day, but I've kind of, I haven't really been in that hobby for a while, but I still have a lot of it laying around. Um, and I, you probably know from the thumbnail picture that I actually, I, along with normal incense, I also burn actual frankincense and myrrh resin. Um, so here's a piece of frankincense, really cool kind of, I guess like orangey color there. And here is a piece of myrrh right here, kind of a darker one. And then those are the big rocks. And then I got some small, this is some frankincense here, some smaller one. And then this is some myrrh. Look at that. It's like really fine in the bottom there too. I'll just get the shave going while I talk about this, but yeah. So, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys who, who go to church a lot, you've, you kind of know the um, the process with burning frankincense and myrrh, and you kind of also kind of know how it smells. But um, the way you burn it is, I have this thing full of sand here, and then here's the coal that you light. And once you light this coal, um, you put the is it? yeah, you would just put some pieces of frankincense on the coal. And then it would uh, it would just kind of burn on there. And what frankincense and myrrh actually is, um, it's a dried up tree resin. I think it comes from a tree over in um, the Middle East somewhere. I forget which tree. But uh, yeah, look at that. Really, really cool. This is a big piece of frankincense here. Um, and then I actually have another bag here. This, this is called Kapal. This is a, a tree resin that comes from, um, I think it comes from South America somewhere. And Kapal kind of has a brighter color like that. Um, but I, I prefer the scent of frankincense and myrrh. Kapal is kind of a lot, kind of a little too lemony for my taste. But um, yeah, I was burning normal incense for a while and then I slowly started getting into more of the resin incenses, like the the frankincense and myrrh. So, so of course, when uh, Sterling released it this year, I'm like, you know what? I'm a big fan of frankincense and myrrh and burning incense. So I want to see what this uh, soap is all about. So I'll tell you right off the bat that um, I'm just going to be honest. Um, frankincense and myrrh. This is not. I don't think this is a crowd-pleasing holiday scent like like um, Christmas Eve is. It's This is definitely a polarizing scent. Um, I, th I don't think this scent is for everyone. Um, so frankincense and myrrh, uh, it's a very, it's a very bold, adventurous kind of scent. Um, it's very earthy and if you're a, and I think this would be a great scent to, for those, for those people who are like really, really into, you know, kind of earthy, kind of resinous type scents. And I had to respect Sterling for putting this one out because the scent on this is just pure frankincense and myrrh. They didn't try to hide its earthiness behind a bunch of other notes that would make it more crowd pleasing. They gave a lot of respect to um, to frankincense and myrrh. So um, I have to appreciate them for that. Go against the grain on the neck here. And another thing I like about this scent too, is that it's made with just pure essential oils. Um, so the scent is very strong and robust and it's really, really good. Another one I like that they do that with is coniferous. Um, just pure essential oils and man, this this one smells like you just cut down a pine tree and you're smelling the inside of it. It's just very, very strong and fresh and realistic. 
and their bay rum. Um, this one smells, I'm sure we know, it smells like a Christmas spice cabinet. Another one of their essential oil only soaps and man, just strong, bold, realistic scent. I just love their soaps that are made with essential oils. Really good stuff. So when I saw that frankincense and myrrh was one of those, I wanted it even more. So Yeah, so I'm just going to try to go against the grain on the neck, and I think that'll probably be good enough for the next shave. I'm going to try to experiment here. Okay, so far so good. So scent notes in frankincense and myrrh, there's only five. So we got frankincense, myrrh, Vanilla, cardamom, and cop copaiba balsam. And I don't really know much about copaiba balsam. I think it's a, I think it's like an evergreen type tree over, over like in Asia or something. Um, Kind of going all over the place here with the <laughs> with the grain against the grain, but when you're talking and shaving, the shaves aren't are not always perfect. But okay, I'm probably gonna leave the neck just there. That's probably good enough, honestly. And then I'm only going to go against the grain on the face. All right, nice first pass here. So, so right, right off the, the top of this scent, like when I smell the puck, like right off the top, it's a very pure kind of frankincense note. So it's it's like, for those of you who know what frankincense smells like, again, that's this. Um, it's slightly citrusy, it's sweet and earthy. Um, so right off the top, I get like mainly, just in the scent, I get mainly a very pure frankincense. And then the myrrh and vanilla, right underneath it, they add a... Uh, they add a, some slight sweet sweet and dark tones to it. Myrrh is kind of a more, is a darker kind of resinous scent, whereas frankincense is kind of on the lighter side. So um, yeah, so the, yeah, the myrrh and vanilla kind of add a dark sweetness to it. And then the cardamom and cop copaiba balsam, they add an earthy spiciness to it. So um, yeah, so this whole thing kind of comes together to be a very, very rich, rich, earthy accord. Very, very rich, earthy, resinous, um, and very, very realistic frankincense and myrrh. I think when, I think this scent would be great if you're like a huge fan of, you know, very natural earthy scents, um, but it's not a crowd pleasing scent. If you're not for people who aren't into very natural earthy scents, this would not be one for them. Um, but again, I got to respect Sterling for, <clears throat> you know, making a scent like this and paying tribute to what frankincense and myrrh actually smells like and not trying to hide it behind a bunch of notes that make it more of a crowd pleasing scent. Like this is the real deal. This is a very, very good rendition of uh, frankincense and myrrh, probably as realistic as, as you could get. Because again, you got the, uh, there's essential oils in there of the frankincense myrrh, vanilla, cardamom, and copaiba balsam. So, um, so when I smell this, it, uh, <laughs> you know what? I didn't even have to lather up the neck because I said I was just going to do the neck once. So <laughs> I guess I'll shave with the grain on there or against the grain one more time. Um, yeah, so people who go to church a lot, you've probably smelled frankincense and myrrh being burned. Um, and this is probably what 
people in ancient Egypt smelled like when they were in a village and there were like camels walking around. That's kind of also the image in my head that I get. Let's go against here. Um, yeah, so very, very, very earthy, resinous, adventurous type scent. Um, and Sterling does have a few of those. Not They have a lot of crowd-pleasing scents like Cologne Dupes, but they also have ones that are kind of more out there and um, kind of like the coniferous, which just smells like the inside of a pine tree. Not one for everyone, but I really respect Sterling for making scents like this that not everyone will like, but for the people that do like it, they're amazing. So a uh, big fan of, of uh, frankincense and myrrh as an incense fan and a fan of natural earthy scents. So props to Sterling for, uh, for doing that. Probably not very smart to go against the grain on the neck again with the uh, Mula R41, but the more I use this thing, the more my, my face can take it, so. Yeah, and like I said, I haven't really seen a lot of people on, uh, on YouTube reviewing this soap, but for anyone who has it, um, I would love to hear your take on it. You know, because I know there's some other frankincense and myrrh soaps out there where they kind of try to hide its earthiness behind a bunch of other notes. But Sterling really nailed this one, just straight up frankincense myrrh with some uh, you know sweetness from the the myrrh and the vanilla and the spiciness with the cardamom and the balsam. So very, very, very good. Uh, I love this scent, but I think it might be a little too adventurous for everybody. It's like a few nicks on the neck there. I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of being a little careless today, talking and shaving, but... <laughs> Maybe going against the grain on the neck right away. Uh, it was kind of an experiment today, but maybe it wasn't the greatest idea. And yeah, and you know, because of all that, Sterling is just, they've always been my favorite artisan. And just out of curiosity, you guys watching, what's your favorite art artisan and why? I would love to know. Uh, you know, because the market is just crazy nowadays. There's so many artisans out there, and um, I just want to know what your guys' favorites are and why. It looks like a great shave today. A couple of nicks on the neck there. Um, human error. Definitely human error. <laughs> but nice smooth shave today. Great post shave feel with Sterling as usual. Um, yeah, very, very nice. Just a couple of. Uh, Okay. And that Adam's apple area, I tell you, it gets me every time. Every time. All right, I guess we're gonna top it off with Christmas Eve here. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to. To wear the frankincense and myrrh splash. I knew this was kind of a soap only scent, so. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Christmas Eve. There's a reason. This is my favorite scent Sterling ever made besides Barbershop. It's just so, so phenomenal. Great mix of evergreen and uh, gourmand notes, which is like vanilla and cranberry. Uh, it takes me right to Christmas morning. Really good stuff. Maybe not the best pairing in the world with <laughs> frankincense and myrrh, but I figured since they're both frankincense and myrrh is a Christmas themed soap, I'll just top it off with uh, Christmas Eve here. So, yeah, I think the only Christmas soap that rivals Christmas Eve, in my opinion, is uh, Vespers from Barrister and Man. They're both great Christmas scents in their own way. All right. Well, besides a couple uh, neck nicks there, very, very good shave with uh, frankincense and myrrh today. If I could find the soap, really good. Probably my like fifth use of that, but um, yeah, just really, I just love how Sterling released this. They paid good tribute to what actual frankincense and myrrh smells like. Very earthy, adventurous, resinous, almost biblical smelling, just really good stuff. So thank you, Sterling, for uh, frankincense and myrrh. This is going to be a staple in my den for quite a while. Well, anyways, guys, I'm going on. I'm rambling, but I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for watching my shave. And um, as always, I love interacting with you guys in the comments. So let me know if you have any feedback, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.